What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube, and today I've got some football focus. We just finished the Week 5 game, Pittsburgh Steelers versus Atlanta Falcons, and for the first time this season we played a complete game. The Pittsburgh Steelers rebounded nicely this week. It is the first time that I am recording one of these videos as a Steeler fan with this football focus on my channel, where I am actually legit happy with the way the game played out. Uh, it wasn't a perfect game by any means. There are some negatives. We will get to those. But all in all, I am very proud of this game. Pittsburgh came in with one of the worst defenses in the entire league. And we're going up against a very high-powered, hot Atlanta offense with multiple good running backs. Devontae Freeman returning for Atlanta, teaming up with Tevin Coleman. You had Austin Hooper, the tight end. You have the three wide receivers Atlanta has. Matt Ryan's a great quarterback. So things weren't looking good coming into this week, but Atlanta also has no defense whatsoever. So it was, uh, it was touted by me to be a shootout. I initially said like 42-38 to 38 kind of game. I was very close. Um, Pittsburgh did score 41, but Atlanta only scored 17. So there you have it. The Steelers win. 41-17, to 17, very convincing win, best win of the season. Uh, Atlanta only has one win this year, but they are a much better team than uh, their record shows. Um, they, again, they've got the same kind of problems we have. They have a dynamic offense with a very good quarterback, a good receiving core, good young running backs, and just no defense. So um, Atlanta is a pretty high-powered offense, and we did a good job shutting them down. Um, offensively, the game plan was pretty solid. Getting James Conner involved, this was Conner's... Probably his best game of the entire season, but certainly his best game since week one against Cleveland. Got him finally going um, for the first time in a long time. Did not start off by, by being way down. Um, we've been starting these games being down like 14-0, 17-0, 21-7. And when you're down like that, you cannot get the running game involved. So Connor becomes a non-factor out of the backfield immediately these last several weeks. But this time we actually controlled the clock. Um, got the ball on the ground to Connor, got him involved in the passing game like he's been getting better at every single week, made him kind of the, the focal point of the offense, and used him to open up Ben downfield. Uh, Big Ben in the first half did not look very good. He was totally out of sync. He missed Juju several times downfield. He was forcing the ball to Antonio. Uh, the touchdown throw he had in the first half to Juju was very high, uh, even though it was a touchdown. Even, even that throw was off. Um, Eamon downfield missed McDonald once, missed Jesse once. Missed Antonio several times, including a really bad first-half interception. Uh, ben forced the ball and threw it in the middle of the field uh, when Brown was triple-covered. Uh, made a very rookie mistake trying to force the ball to his receiver. Um, and we went into the halftime only up 13-10 to and looked like we were going to blow the 13 nothing lead we had. And things weren't looking good. The first half was very average at best. And we came out in the second half and just looked amazing. I mean, we outscored Atlanta what, uh, let's see, we had 13 in the first half. We, we outscored Atlanta, I think, 38-7 to in the second half. Uh, really, I'm sorry, 28-7 to in the second half. Very, very good second half for the Steelers. Um, to get to some game balls here, uh, first things first, special teams, uh, talking about those guys. Uh, one positive and one negative. Um, Boswell wasn't heard from much today, but he did miss another extra point. That's either his third or fourth missed extra point this season. Uh, he didn't have any field goal attempts today, and he made the other extra points. But, again, he missed an extra point, and that's the, at least the third time this year he's done that. Something is wrong with Boswell. Uh, we got some issues there. we got to fix that. Uh, penalties are still a bit of an issue for us. That is a negative for us as well. Um, I didn't write down this, the, the number, but I know that on one drive we cost ourselves a uh, personal foul on a bad call against T.J. Watt. And then uh, um, twice in this game I know that um, Bud Dupree was called for legal hands of the face. Uh, once on a third down, which cost us uh, a third down stop on defense. Um, so that, that's not good. We still have to clean the penalties up a little bit. And obviously Ben's forced interception at the end of the first half, taking points off the board, trying to target Antonio, was a bad call. I thought Antonio was over-targeted in this game. Uh, he wound up having a very, very good second half, multiple touchdowns, got a deep ball finally, which was great. But we're, we're, they're trying too hard to force the ball to Antonio is a very obvious thing. You have Juju Smith-Schuster, who's a very good receiver. You've got James Washington, who's fast downfield as a young athletic receiver. You've got two very good tight ends in Jesse James and in... Um, you got Vance McDonald. You guys know who I'm talking about. You've got James Conner, who is a very good out-of-the-backfield uh, receiver who's getting better and better catching the ball. You've got plenty of options to go around. You don't need Antonio getting 15 targets, especially if he's only going to catch half of them. So cut down on those, cut down forcing the ball, cut down penalties, 
and um, fix Boswell's issues. But other than that, this was a very, very good game. Um, Big Ben's stats for the game, good game ball to him, 19 of 29, 250 yards, three touchdowns, and the one forced interception. Uh, so pretty solid game for him. Uh, like I said, looked off in the first half, but came back very strong in the second. Managed the game well, um, knew when to check down. Caught, did catch the good deep ball touchdown to Antonio. James Conner is the MVP of this game on offense for me. Uh, like I said, his best game probably of the season. 21 carries, 110 yards, and two touchdowns on the ground, plus four catches for 75 through the air. So uh, what I love about Conner so much is uh, he's hard to bring down. He's a very hard guy to tackle. He's been getting momentum going forward, and he's been holding on to that ball. He did fumble uh, once out of bounds in this game. Uh, trying to fight for extra yardage. But he has pretty solid footwork in making guys miss in the open field, and he's hard to bring down. I'm really, really enjoying Connor's vision as he gets better in carrying the ball. The offensive line finally blocked for him in this game. Uh, they had not been blocking very well uh, for the run for us this year, and this was uh, creating some good holes for Connor. So over 100 yards and two touchdowns on the ground, plus very effective through the air, making plays. Um, again, keeping the ball on our side of the field, picking up short third downs, uh, scampering for first downs and extending, you know, extending our drives and just uh, keeping our defense off the field. Antonio Brown, big bounce back game for him, much needed, big second half. Six catches, 101 yards and two touchdowns, much needed. Antonio got the deep ball, finally getting on the same page with Ben. I hope that continues. Juju Smith-Schuster uh, was the only other receiver to do much of anything uh, noteworthy in this game. Uh, only 30 yards receiving, but did have a touchdown on a nice, uh, it was a high ball from Big Ben. He made a very nice catch on that. Uh, so good for Juju keeping up his positive uh, momentum going forward. Defensively, I've got a lot of positive things to say. Uh, this is the first time in a long time. I think we had six sacks today. What I said last week against Baltimore, what didn't work. Our coverage guy, our cover guys are not great. Aside from Joe Hayden, um, we don't have very good corners. Sensabaugh and Burns are not very good. Morgan Burnett cannot get on the field. He's like, he did not play again this week. Mike Hilton just came back this week, and he's more of a blitzer anyway. And the linebackers are not very good in coverage either. So when you only have one cover guy and you've got several injuries, um, the best thing to do is blitz the quarterback. You saw our most effective game on defense was against the Buccaneers, and that's because we got several sacks and we caused several turnovers by Fitzpatrick. Uh, we did not get any picks in this game off Matt Ryan, but we did sack him six times and get several tackles for a loss on the running backs and get in the backfield and cause him to miss guys all day long. He was missing a lot of guys downfield. He missed um, Muhammad Sanu several times, although Muhammad Sanu did get one long touchdown. Credit to him. And Julio Jones really through three quarters didn't do anything in this game. He had four targets for no catches and no yards in this game until the fourth quarter. He got a few garbage time catches. Um, down the field, but Hayden did a great job on him, and they shut him down for, for over three quarters of this game, so fair play to the corners in this game. Um, TJ, TJ Watt was just insane in this game. It was his second big multi-sack game of the season. He was very disruptive. He, uh, he deflected a ball in this game. He had uh, six tackles, including, I think, uh, four of those were for a loss. Um, three sacks he was credited with. I thought he had four, but he was credited with three sacks. And uh, got a forced fumble as well. He sacked uh, Matt Ryan, causing a forced fumble, which was recovered in the end zone by LJ Fort. So, uh, again, six tackles, three sacks, and a forced fumble, and a batted ball. So, TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Week honors, might go to you, my friend. Um, Vince Williams was the notable injury on defense today, but several guys stepped up in, in uh, their favor, played very well. Um, Tyler Medikavich made a few plays. Special teams, he had one good gunner tackle. Um, had a couple of tackles uh, on the running backs out there. Didn't do anything outstanding, but was okay out there today. Wasn't, wasn't a glaring um, problem. We didn't miss Vince Williams too much in this game, in my opinion. LJ Ford filled in very nicely when he was in there. Six tackles for him. I believe uh, two were for a loss. Uh, he had a sack, a fumble recovery, and uh, the touchdown. So he recovered uh, Watt's fumble for the TD. Also had a sack and six tackles. So very good game for Fort. Uh, I don't think this is going to be leading to any starting job or anything major. I don't think he uh, had a breakthrough or anything, but it was a very big game for him. Again, we didn't miss Vince Williams much. Mike Hilton being back, he didn't get any notable stats, but he did disrupt several plays. He got back in the backfield. He got a few hits on the quarterback uh, mid-throw and disrupted a few plays, causing Ryan to overshoot. So uh, Hilton played pretty well. Also, Cam Hayward, uh, actually all three of the guys, Javon Hargrave had a tackle on the running back in the backfield. 
Um, Tewitt had one in the backfield as well, and Cam Hayward had uh, a sack and an, another big tackle for a loss as well. So all three guys uh, not playing exactly as you'd expect that front three to play, but uh, made some plays today. Hayward, the best of the three, uh, got a sack and got back there a few times. So we're seeing penetration not only in, in the good blitzing packages and the much better calls at being aggressive and blitzing the corners as well, but also getting Cam Hayward and the defensive line getting more penetration um, because the Atlanta Falcons running game is a very strong running game, and they had Devontae Freeman back for the first time this year, and none of those guys did uh, anything special on the ground today. Um, also, John Bostic with a sack as well, so a fair play to him. Special teams, like I said, there was one big play for special teams as well uh, that was positive. Rosie Nix, I want to call it the fullback on this, uh, this day. He deserves it. Not only did he uh, block a punt, which was a big... Um, Big, big swing for us because we had just scored a touchdown, got a three and out defensive stop, which is rare for us. We got several of those today. Very, very well done. Uh, and then Rosie Nix comes out, blocks a punt, gets us the ball on the 20-yard line. And then later on that drive is the lead blocker for a Connor touchdown on the outside, which he caused. So Rosie Nix, several important plays, got, got the ball back in our hands in the red zone and then got, a, got us a touchdown as well. So uh, big ups to Rosie Nix in this game. Uh, so what did you guys think? Overall, I'm very happy. Defense got pressure for the first time. Uh, coverage on the back end was the best it's been all season. Uh, big, again, big props to Joe Hayden. Ford filled in nicely. Watt was on fire. Uh, Bud Dupree played pretty well, and the front three got more pressure than usual today. Um, on offense, again, getting A.B. back involved, getting back on the same page later in the game with Ben, and getting Connor in the running game back and spreading the ball around at the right times and keeping the ball for longer drives. Major positives today. All three phases of the game played well, and we earned and deserved this 41-17 statement victory, hoping to chain together two in a row before the bye week. We have a big divisional game against the Bengals uh, next week. That's going to be a big, big game for us, being that we're behind right now. But I feel pretty comfortable right now sitting at 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. Uh, Things can change very quickly in a week. All of a sudden now, the offense looks like it's... You know, A.B. is getting back on the same page. Connor's starting to run the ball well now. All of a sudden, the coverage is getting slightly better because the pressure is there. We're getting a little healthier. Um, Hilton came back this week. We're supposedly getting Morgan Burnett back next week, which could be a big help to us. So suddenly, we're getting a little healthier. We're getting a little more aggressive. It's starting to feel a little more like the Steelers. So now at 2-2-1, two, two, we're not looking too bad in the AFC, which there are no big dominant teams besides the Chiefs right now. And the Patriots are on their way up as well. So... We got the Bengals next week. What are you guys looking for in that game? And what did you think of this game? Tell me in the comments down below. And I will see you guys next time for Football Focus. And come back to this channel for much more horror reviews and Halloween stuff as well. Happy Halloween, friends. See you soon.